Shalom Chavarim and welcome to Seeking Truth in Torah and I am really really excited about this teaching as I'm always excited about the teachings and I really pray that you'll get this excitement and get what I'm going to be sharing today with you so I just want to say welcome and I pray that you'll just be so blessed with this teaching as I truly believe that you will be because this is something that has really been on my heart for quite a while this teaching to do this with you and so let us just pray first before we get into it father we just thank you this evening father for being with us father we thank you so much that you love us father so uniquely as we are as individuals and that you have a unique set of gifts father that you have given to us you have a unique a unique personality that you've placed in each one of us father and i pray that through this teaching we will realize more of who we are father and how to use what you have given to us father to benefit you and your glory father and your kingdom and we thank you for that i just pray a blessing over everyone that is listening to this father that their ears will be open to receive father yeah, your message your truth that this spirit father will receive from your hand messiah yeshua we do this all for your glory father and we want to just receive from you and we thank you father we pray this in your mighty name amen so the teaching i have entitled it what is so wrong with being martha or what's so wrong with being martha now continually actually i'm always encountering this negativity regarding martha there's actually songs that Christians have written about Martha Martha why are you so busy why are you so afraid sit down sit down and there's this continual thing about victimizing Martha and I really believe that that's a very inappropriate way for us to see her or a very negative way for us to see her as Mary and Martha are actually two very special women and two very strong witnesses about Yeshua even in their generation but also in ours because Hebrews 12 as we know says that there's this great cloud of witnesses that are just cheering us on and they are part of that great cloud of witnesses they walked with Yeshua they ate with him they spent so much time with him and and this evening I just want us to look at Mary and at Martha but mainly at Martha and to ask ourselves where is our perception of Martha come from and what's so wrong with being Martha so I, I just want to say that we should never actually take people whose lives we don't know much about and say they bad and they good and many pastors many preachers have spoken and teachers alike have have used Martha and her story only one particular story which is found in Luke chapter 10 which is where we're going to begin but many people have just used that story to to indicate what kind of people they are and it's incorrect for us to just take one story out of context and and to just use that so let's get into it and 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 let's look at Martha so let's start with that let's start with Luke chapter 10 this is what it says as Yeshua and his disciples were on their way he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him she had a sister called Mary who sat at Yeshua's feet listening to what he said but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Teacher, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But Yeshua answered and said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is good, and that will not be taken away from her. Now, as I started off saying, this scripture, passage of scripture has been used many times. Here we have Martha and we have Mary. We have Mary, Martha's sister, who is indeed actually just sitting at Yeshua's feet, just listening to what he is saying, just receiving from him. And here you have Martha, who is is distracted by all the preparations that she has to do and she lashes out in this way. Now, we need to look at actually what is actually going on here. While this is not the only interaction that readers have with Martha throughout the word, I'm going to show you later on, we have other interactions with her that needs to draw on, on who we see her as. But as this is, n this is not only that, 
first time that we see her but it's one of the only places that people actually remember Martha it's one of the only interactions that we recall to our mind and I pray this evening that through this teaching you're going to be able to go and when you hear someone speaking bad about Martha that you'll be able to go and point out to them that that maybe you're not seeing the bigger picture and and I pray for that so so this Luke chapter 10 is going, we're going to unpack it. We need to look at the context. We need to look at what Mary is doing, what Martha is doing, what Yeshua is actually doing. Because that is going to tell us a lot about his interaction with Martha and with Mary. So this is the context of Luke chapter 10. Yeshua and his disciples are making their way through a village named Bethany. It's about two miles from Jerusalem. It's very close to Jerusalem. And while he is traveling through this village, he meets a woman named Martha. Martha goes out to him and invites Yeshua into her home. So notice this. Martha is the one who goes out to Yeshua first and invites him excitedly into her home. And then she gets busy preparing for the evening meal. And, and what began to happen there was a lot of people heard about Yeshua, this great man that was performing all these miracles. And it is safe to say that a lot of people began to gather in her home once they heard that this controversial man named Yeshua was sitting down to supper in the small village. Bethany was a small village and obviously there was a lot of talk about Yeshua and people wanted to see him, they wanted to hear his teachings. So not only were there 12 hungry grown men, disciples with Yeshua, who had to be fed and, and looked after, but guests soon began to pour in. And I think that any of us would begin to feel overwhelmed because Martha began to feel overwhelmed. She began to feel truly overwhelmed. She has a distinguished guest in her house. She has Yeshua there. And then she has all these people who are coming in. She has these hungry disciples. And this is the first glance that we get into the character of Martha. So what we can first see, what we need to step back and see is that Martha is naturally a warm person. She went out to Yeshua. She didn't wait for him to pass by her little gate and wave and say, Hi, I'm having uh, supper. Would you like to come? She went out to him uh, with this natural warmth that she had and she invited him and his followers into her home. So it shows that she also has a hospitality gifting. And how many people do you know with a hospitality gifting? I know quite a few people with that gifting and it's a, it's a beautiful gifting to have. People that make you feel welcome when you go into the home. People that are always wanting to give you something to drink, give you something to eat. You just feel at home in their home. And I believe that that is truly how Martha was. She had this hospitality gifting and you'll see throughout the scriptures where we encounter her. She's always serving. She's always making the meals. Some scholars say that Mary was always sitting at Yeshua's feet while Martha was always serving him and that is truly what we see in the character of Martha we see a woman that is as the picture is behind behind in my video it's it's showing her kneading this dough and making the things that needed to be made it's not as easy for them as it maybe is for us many people I know entertain people and all they do is go down to the local store and buy some TV dinners and warm it up pop it on a plate and everyone thinks that they made it but the truth is that's not how it was in their day everything was made from beginning to end and had to be made with the hands so here we see that all these people are in her home and now she's beginning to feel truly truly overwhelmed by what is actually happening she's beginning to feel the pressure and on that day in Bethany Martha was using what she had to serve she was doing what she always did she was being hospitable. She was actually being Martha. That's all she was being. It was part of her nature, part of her design. But it all became a bit too much for her. And I want us just to pause there. And I want you to just think about yourself and say, what is part of your nature? What is part of your design? What 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 do you naturally bring when you're in a fellowship, for example, or when you go to someone's home? What is it that naturally runs through your mind? What What is it that you naturally want to bring to other people? Because that's part of your design. It's part of who God made you to be. So Martha is actually just being Martha. She's using what she was given by the great I am. He gave her this great gift of hospitality and warmth to use, to serve. And that's what she's doing. But suddenly because of this great extent of the pressure it, it suddenly begins to be a bit too much for her 
and we see that she becomes overwhelmed and she actually singles out Mary for unwillingness to help. She's, she's trying to find a place to place her frustration and many of us do that. I know sometimes we can kick over the cat's water, for example, and suddenly shout at someone else that's standing in close vicinity and all of a sudden it's their fault, but it's not their fault. We are just simply looking for a place to place our frustration. And this is what Martha's doing. She is so suddenly frustrated and overwhelmed. She singles Mary out for unwillingness to help. But Yeshua sees deeper than that. He sees that place in her and he reaches out to her in, in her chaotic and overwhelmed state. And his words say, Martha, Martha. And if you look at them in the original language, they are so full of care for her and concern and of tenderness. It's the kind of, I love you, dear woman statement that Yeshua makes often to those in his most intimate circle. He is not, he's not, um, condemning her he's not judging her he's seen where she's coming from and he's saying he's saying to her martha martha on that day in that setting yeshua called to martha very tenderly and he tells her there he he says exactly what's going on i mean he's not going to that's how yeshua it is with us sometimes we feel a certain way and maybe we don't even understand how we feel or we feel fearful about something, or anxious, or scared about something, and we don't know the root. But Yeshua, He gets right to the root, because He wants to go into that place with us. And He says to her, you are anxious about many things. So what is He doing? He's actually doing what a good psychologist should do. He notices the feeling and emotion that she is struggling with, anxiety. He says, you are anxious for many things things and it's important for us to be able to look at the meaning of that word the greek word for anxious here is merim now it means an anxiety or state of restlessness that deeply disturbs and disrupts the tranquil state of mind and it disturbs your personality and your actions Yeshua then goes on to say, she's not only anxious, but you are troubled, Martha. A again, now he's recognizing the secondary emotion that she is feeling. You are troubled. The word for troubled here is ter -bazy, a state of being in a noisy, surging crowd that just closes you in. It becomes way too much for you. In other words, Martha's God-given gift of serving in such a beautiful way is no longer coming from a place of trust it's no longer can it come from a place of rest but it's become a chaotic place of striving because now there is too many expectations placed on her be it expectations from herself be it expectations from the crowd be it something that's happening in her mind because it is happening first in her mind and in her thoughts i need to serve i need to help it's coming from a state of restlessness and i can honestly say that this ministers deeply to me because i and i know that it ministers deeply to many people because sometimes people um, maybe put an expectation on us and we have a god-given gift to do something and all of a sudden it we are we can't do it in a state of peace we can't do it in a state of rest because maybe we have a deadline that that's looming and we may be sick and so sometimes we have to strive to meet this deadline or maybe i know and believe that moms feel like this a lot because mothers have a lot on their plate they're dealing with children sometimes their children get sick sometimes their children and their husband is sick at the same time sometimes working moms have this this work that they need to do this career they focus on and also being a mom being a wife having all these things to juggle and many times our gifts can't be used ineffectively as it should be because we have an anxiety or state of restlessness this even goes deeper into sometimes we're dealing with things within ourselves. sometimes we're dealing with disappointment or grief or something has happened that's caught us off guard and it's hard for us and at that time maybe maybe you're in a ministry where you're still serving or you have to preach every week or you have to be the worship leader or you have to minister or you're a counselor but yet inside yourself that state of rest and peace isn't there because of the situation you find yourself in and you know what there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with recognizing and being real with your feelings and your emotions and recognize what's actually going on and that's a big part of this teaching that i feel yahweh wants me to bring out this evening is to ask ourselves 
what what is it that is driving what we do in other words what is it that causes you to serve what is it that causes you to use your gifting is is it a sense of loneliness is it a sense of sadness is it a sense of you want to do what someone else is doing what is is the the starting point of why you want to serve and and for Martha it was this reality of knowing that her gifting is to be hospitable and she's used to being like that but now there is too much that is disturbing her so she can't be at peace in her gifting she can't choose a place of rest without being so troubled in herself and now resting is not about going on holiday it's not about sitting back and doing nothing what father has taught me about rest is that rest needs to be a part of our work in other words if you work at something you can come at it from a place of rest and peace within yourself people don't rest when they strive for perfection maybe Martha wanted to do it so well because she wanted to bless Yeshua maybe she wanted to bless the people around her and striving for that state of doing it in a perfect way striving for that place of perfection also comes from a place of fear fear of failure and many people I know do things striving for perfection but it's actually motivated by a fear of failure so they never have rest while they are working they use their gift but it's you'll never maximize a gift and the use of that gift if your place that you're coming from is not good so let's move on Yeshua called to her as he saw straight through what she was doing as I said already not in a judgmental way but in a manner of love he called to her so that she could acknowledge that her character needed a little bit of changing her character needed a little bit of changing in that environment in that setting in that way he didn't want her to strive anymore he wanted her to be able to do what she was doing but in a place of rest and the chapter here ends with Yeshua's words to Martha he says Mary has chosen what is good and that will not be taken away from her now I a lot of people use that that scripture for many things and it sounds a bit harsh in our English language the words sound quite harsh oh you know Mary's chosen what's good is not going to be taken away from her deal with it but that's not what he's actually saying keep in mind the context that we've just discussed the Greek word for good here is agothos it means good profitable useful something of benefit or blessing in other words Yeshua is not condemning Martha's actions he's not condemning what she's doing and neither is he comparing her conduct to Mary Yeshua is never is going to do that he's not going to come and say to me hey you know your thing that you're doing it's not as good as your neighbor's thing he's not that kind of God he's not that kind of father he's rather he's telling Martha that Mary has chosen a place of solace a place of stillness she's chosen the position of a student because I personally believe every time I encounter Mary through the scripture that that's her natural way Mary naturally sits and you'll see that just now when we encounter the next scripture she's naturally a person that's sitting she's naturally a person that is still she's naturally that kind of person and we need to realize that there's a place for action Martha is that action person Mary is that still sitting person you know sometimes you go to a prayer meeting and you have these people they sit quietly on the couch and, and the, the worship is going and their eyes are closed and there's just this this oh there's this beautiful sense about them that they're just in a place where they s encountering father and at the same time in the same prayer meeting you have someone that's walking up and down that's praying out loud and they're also in the presence of the father so you see there's these different ways that we connect with Yeshua and that is what is happening here. Mary is this still person she has chosen a place on the floor close to Yeshua she wants to be close to him so she can hear his life-giving words because she needs him so much and she knows she does and she wants to receive the fruit thereof this is a beneficial choice and Yeshua will not take that away from Mary and that's beautiful 
Because he's saying, Martha, I'm not going to take that from Mary. Because this is Mary's natural way. Just like he's not going to take from her her desire to serve. He never tells her not to serve. He just tells her, you're anxious and you're troubled for many things. So he wants her to deal with the negative emotions. Whereas Mary, she's just been who she is. She takes that seat and she takes a place of stillness. That's who she is. And and that's what, the f that's what Yeshua is actually saying. He's saying that, Martha, I'm not going to take that away from her. She's just been herself. She's just truly, truly been herself. Now, I'm not going to take that from her. So it's not a condemning thing and it's not a bad statement to make. But it's just... It's just the way that he is communicating with both of them. Now, Yeshua loved Martha and he loved Mary. And we need to realize that his desire was for each one of them to become mature and to become set apart as true disciples. Worry and anxiety, overthinking, which many people do, and overclouding our minds and our souls separates us from knowing Father in a more deeper way. Yahweh's words spoken through Isaiah reflect the lesson that Yeshua was trying to teach Martha and this is what he was trying to say it's one of my favorite scriptures it says for thus said Yahweh the Holy One of Israel in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness and in trust shall be your strength but you were unwilling Isaiah 30 verse 15 let us not be unwilling when Yeshua says to us return and rest in me because there in a quietness and in a deep trust with him that's your strength if you have a gift today which you are trying to use for the kingdom but you feel like as though it's not working nothing's happening for you or or you just feeling no rest no peace no quietness no trust then Go back and sit by the feet of Yeshua. Take the place of Mary and say, Father, what is driving what I'm doing? Why do I want to do this? Is it because I want something that you don't want for me? Is it just that you are trying to teach me something? What is it? And take to heart what Yeshua is saying. He's saying, be still. He's saying, rest. He's saying, return. Sit in him. Rest means that you can work and have peace still inside it doesn't exactly like i said earlier it doesn't mean that you don't do anything it means that you serve from a place of wholeness that you become a servant led by the spirit we also need to realize that while martha was using her giftings to get things working in her own home yeshua could have fed those people on his own he fed five thousand with with a few little fish and a few little loaves and this doesn't minimize what Martha was doing for him. However, it asked her to take a closer look at where she was coming from, what her emotions were that, dri that were driving her. And, and that's what we need to see. So now let's broaden our rising on the character and person of Martha. We've unpacked the scripture that everyone uses to maybe condemn Martha and uplift Mary. But we see that they were naturally two very special people. And now I want us to look at a scripture that's vitally important for us. It's the time when Mary and Martha are in a state of mourning. It's John 11. Their brother has died. Lazarus has died. It's the tragic death of Lazarus. Yeshua comes a few days later. And though in, in a natural sense it seems like Yeshua is running late. But he's not running late. He's perfectly on time. And this is what happens. He, he reaches the village of Bethany again. And when Yeshua heard, uh, when Martha heard that Yeshua was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Yeshua, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now that God will give you whatever you ask. Yeshua said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Yeshua said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is to come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and he is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Yeshua had not yet entered Bethany, the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. Now, I want us to reflect 
on this story and look at the different reactions of both Martha and Mary. What do we see? Exactly like we saw earlier on. Martha gets up. She gets up and she goes out to Yeshua. She did this in the story that we read in Luke just now. Martha gets up from a place of mourning and she goes out to meet Yeshua. What does Mary do? Mary doesn't move. In other words, she is sitting exactly like we saw in the story earlier on. Martha goes out. She's that busy woman. She goes out. Mary sits. Even in her grief, even in Martha's grief, she is the very first person in her family to go out to Yeshua. She was the one that invited him to her home in the beginning. She is the one that goes out to him again. She did not sit around waiting for a rabbi to come to her, but rather she went out to him. And I feel that that's so much sometimes what we need to do. We need to take the negative that's happening in our life and, and, and not allow it to get us to a place where we are defeated. But we can get up even in a place of mourning and we can run to him. And, and, and she has a deep conversation here with Yeshua. She, and in her conversation with him, she expressed an intimate faith that should be inspiring. She expresses something that's completely inspiring. In her devotion to Yeshua, she expresses the ultimate confession of faith and the ultimate belief that Yeshua was the Son of God. Now this is just before Yeshua died and just before he was resurrected. Even without this knowledge and the witness of his death and resurrection, she knew who he was. We need to compare this to Peter's confession in Matthew 16. In Matthew 16, Yeshua asked Peter, who do you believe that I am? And Peter declares that he is the Messiah, the Son of God. And Yeshua says to him, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but only Yahweh himself. It's exactly what happens with Martha. What does she say? She says, yes, Lord. She replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is to come into the world. And you know, after this she goes and she, she calls Mary and then Mary comes. Martha is expressing the ultimate confession of faith that every disciple must make, that every single person must make. And, and the writer of this gospel is comparing her confession to Peter's. They confess the exact same thing. What does this mean to us? That Martha is a disciple of of Yeshua and he met her alone one on one on the road and he asked her what do you believe and she confessed this and it's touching and it's moving and it's intimate and it's special after this encounter with Yeshua Martha went and she called her sister Mary and then she told her to go and meet Yeshua and I want to say this aren't the roles reversed here Aren't the roles completely reversed? Is not Mary caught up with her situation? Is she not not able? She's unable to see beyond. Yes, her brother had passed away suddenly and truly the grief was unimaginable. But at times Mary also chose to follow her feelings. She chose to follow her own attitude. And don't we all do the same? She was in that reversed role. Just like we saw Martha had feelings that were holding her back. Initially in in with the serving and with Mary being in a state of stillness and freedom to experience Yeshua, the roles are completely reversed verse Mary here is sitting the natural way that Mary is she sits but her feelings are holding her to that place and it's and it's Martha that goes to her and says hey the teacher wants to see you he is here and then Mary gets so excited and she runs out and there is no condemnation for Mary's feelings she's completely human Yeshua is not condemning us for being human he's not condemning us for having these feelings I believe that Mary understood her own own frailty and she understood her dire need for Yeshua so much so that she Mary she anointed him with a whole year's worth of spike knot she comes in again later on Yeshua spent his final week before his death he spent it in the home of Mary and Martha and you can read that in Mark chapter 11 and and this home must have been a special one because Yeshua wouldn't have gone to a home that wasn't a, a, a home where he could really be himself. He wouldn't have been there. He went there and that's where Mary comes and anoints his feet. And if you read Mark chapter 11 verse 11, it actually says that Martha served 
the meal. And isn't that amazing? Martha was serving the meal when Mary came in and, and anointed his feet. Here again you see Martha with this amazing servant heart and attitude to serve and prepare his meals and take care of his needs. Mary is continually sitting and continually at his feet, even to anoint his feet for his death. And it's just incredibly special. And truly this family was incredibly special to Yeshua and we should neither judge them nor condemn their lives because they were just amazing people. I want to say this, there are only four people mentioned in the Gospels that Yeshua loved. It says the ones Yeshua loved. This family is listed as three of them. Isn't that amazing? John 11:15 says, Now Yeshua loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. I find it very interesting that Martha is mentioned first. And this tells us a lot about how much Yeshua loved his faithful follower Martha. It, he loved her very much and he loves us very much and he sees beyond the things that we struggle with even in our own feelings, even when we struggle to use our gifts properly maybe. Sometimes even when we struggle in just living a natural everyday life, sometimes things get tough. He sees that and he says that we need him and he wants us to come and sit at his feet and he wants us to serve him and he wants us to declare that he is the Messiah and he wants us also to receive from him. You know, the place where Mary sat was a place of receiving and that is what he wants for us. He knows that we need him and he wants us to come, he wants us to sit and he wants us to rest at his feet. Yeshua's invitation was for total rest for Martha and for total love. And if we are honest with ourselves, we will admit that we also have Martha moments and we have Mary moments. We have moments where we can be so overcome by our circumstances that we just sit and we don't go out to Yeshua when maybe we should. And sometimes we have moments where we feel chaos, where we feel anxiety and where we put our frustration on someone else or on something else when Yeshua just wants us to rest. So that is that is a big thing that we need to see and realize. And I just wanted to add this in at the end of the teaching. That in actual fact, there are many, many legends about Martha. And I, when I was looking at this, I found it very interesting. I found it in, in a book dealing with the different legends of the different disciples of Yeshua. And this was one of them. It says, in the south of France, legends developed claiming that Martha, Mary Magdalene, and Lazarus had actually traveled to spread the good news. They had traveled around and spread. It was actually also taught that Martha preached publicly, that she healed the sick in the name of Yeshua, and that she even raised the dead. In one of her most famous exploits, she defeats a dragon that was terrorizing the town and at the time this legend became so widespread that in the 12th and 13th centuries, the later uh, the people that began to make windows on the churches began to make pictures featuring Martha with a slain dragon at her feet because this legend just spread and also other artists painted her and used to paint her a lot as a very devoted disciple of Yeshua and there's a lot more legends that go into it and we know legends don't always have truth but they do reveal a certain kind of truth to us and that certain kind of truth says that many many people knew that Martha was an amazing woman. She was a strong woman and these legends show us that she was a woman that was truly a devoted disciple of Yeshua. She was a woman that was recognized for power, for strength and, and for her her righteousness, for the way that she loved Yeshua, for the way that, and I do, I do believe that Martha, I believe that Mary, maybe even Lazarus, we don't know, but I do believe that they would have shared the good news. I believe that their lives were touched. Remember, they were there when Yeshua died. There's also many paintings depicting Martha at the cross, at the foot of the stake of Yeshua. There were many women that followed Yeshua and many women that were there at his death. And they were there at his resurrection and were there when they received the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe that their lives were touched. Their lives were touched in a way that we cannot even imagine. And it led them to want to do great things for the King. And so this evening, what I want to leave you with is 
the fact that you have a gift and you have a calling and you have a unique personality and you mustn't try and be like somebody else you don't need to be like anybody else you don't need to be like your sister you don't need to be like a family member you don't need to be like your mom or your dad you don't need to be like the person next to you and don't try and use your gift like someone else uses theirs because each one of us is different each one of us communicates differently works differently creates differently we are unique what what father is saying is what is driving your need to serve me what is driving your need to serve me and what is driving your need to serve Yeshua tonight? Is it the need to be like somebody else? Is it the need to, to stop feeling so insignificant? Is it the fact that you still feel fatherless and you're trying to earn his love by serving him? He doesn't want that from you. He wants you to receive what he has purchased for you. He wants to look at your face. He wants to look in your eyes and he wants to say, you need me. Now let me serve you because that's what he came to do he came to serve us and he came to give us everything that we would need so that we do not need to strive and that we do not need to be anxious and that we do not need to be troubled and so let us just pray and let us reflect on what i said this evening for all of us each and every single one of us need to ask ourselves why we do what we do and if we know that we're doing it in a pureness of heart but yet sometimes we get anxious because we're normal people and we will I pray this evening that Yeshua, Father, that you would come into that place of anxiety within us or even that place of fear or even in that place of confusion, Father, where it just feels too much, Father, that you would take that cup, Father, from us and that, Abba, Father, you would help us, help us serve you as you want us to serve you, Father, and help us be people father that know that we can work hard for your kingdom but Yahweh that we can rest deeply father even in that work father as you said you've given us rest all who are weary and heavy laden come to me and I will give you rest tonight father we know that sometimes we carry burdens father we carry so many burdens and we know that you are the burden carrying Elohim and tonight we come with our burdens father and we surrender them to you father we have needs and we surrender them to you father and we get down on our knees this evening and we say father here I am here we are father use us as you want may our stories reflect your story father may you write with the pen that you have chosen father may you write our stories and may we be the people you want us to be father we bless you and we thank you we thank you for the role models we thank you for the men and women of faith we thank you for who mary was and we thank you for who martha was father and we thank you that they are part of the great cloud of witnesses that are, are cheering us on every day and we thank you that we will one day meet with them as well and that we will all be together father as we serve and strive to just be who you want us to be we thank you father and we praise you tonight you are worthy ever father we worship you yahweh we praise you yeshua and we just lay our hearts before you yeshua Mashiach. we praise you we thank you yeah, thank you father amen and i just want to say thank you for joining and thank you and i pray that you will be able to to answer someone when they say to you martha wasn't a good person or she didn't do good things because that is not true she did and i just bless you i bless you in the wonderful name of messiah yeshua amen mm -hmm.